public participation. Uh, we were due to have four public speakers, but we've only got three tonight. Um, so we will do those shortly. Um, item five is to note the rules of procedure, um, which is set out in the agenda. Let's actually proceed before the call to process. So if anyone's excited about that, that's lovely. Does anybody want to discuss it before we move on to um, item six, which is the substantive item? No? Okay, let's move on then. So item six is the request for the review of the decision in 191 of the Cabinet the 28th of July in the Country Street Trade Review. Um, as I said, we'll remind the committee that we are here to scrutinise the report and to the decision made by the Cabinet. So we've got now three public speakers. I'm going to ask the uh, first public speaker, Steve Thunberg, to come up to my phone just down here. And uh, George Pickett, here you go. So just to remind you, you yeah, have three minutes. Uh, I'm going to be quite strict on that because I suspect we may have to have one more meeting for the last one. Thank you, Steve. Right. I've been a market trader for 26 years and the chairman of the Canterbury Market Trade Association for 13 years. We learned about the council's plans to declutter sectoral districts in the newspaper store two years ago. No one had the decency to be properly notified us, though our livelihoods were and still are at risk from these plans. Richard Ball was, was then council officer in charge. I met with him and council flat several times. The understanding that was we market traders would surrender our pitches in order to trade from an alternative pitch close to the market, market's existing base. And I was asking to draw up plans for alternative dishes close to St. George's Street. I did that, suggest, suggesting sites in High Street, which Richard agreed was a good location due to football. I was given to understand my plans were sound, but in January this, this year I found Richard was no longer in place. I got an email that said I need to step back from these issues and someone else would replace me. Moments of uncertainty and stress fell well off by. Then Bill Beats took over, and the, and the result was a consultation. Important sessions of the, sections of this pitch was not allowed to see before it went public. Most people broke out of the pitches, so again, there was no engagement with us as stakeholders. Well, when we did see the pitch plan, the sites were unsensible and bear no resemblance to what I had worked on with Rich Moore. The consultation gives no explanation for the public or councillors of the importance difference between a market trader and a street trader or their needs. Market traders work with large physique boat pitches. Only two sites are offered for these residential <coughs> Lane and Station Road West, Newbury Central. The residential official complained about this may be going to the Ombudsman. 41 pitches have been offered to street traders, but there's only two or three of them work regular in Canterbury, while the, there are 13 market traders. Worse, the consultation shows figures well below the market income needed to meet the council budget of 80,700. 2020 showed only 16,000 16, pounds worth but there was two words given to this explaining COVID affected. For 2021, there was another low figure of 47.457, and a statement that income is expected to decline further, but no explanation was given. At the recent public meeting, we were asked if a popular market should make so little money. One brave trader put the truth into the public domain because the, club, because the council had not been invoicing us. It's true. The council have failed to play pitches properly for us since 2020, the year it announced their plans until that news was exposed on July 29th, the day after the council vote. Last week we were finally invoiced for a full five months of the tax year, no doubt a rush job because all the invoices are not great, or a lot of the invoices are not great. This whole thing needs to be given and we rely on all the council to do the right thing. Now is your chance. Thank you. Thank you.
members voted here, using information in a report written by Council Officer William Hicks following that public consultation. And we say that report contains discredited information. Now, importantly, the consultation showed the majority of respondents want stalls to remain in one location. Of course they do. That's what a market is. Not stalls scattered to small street trader pitches across the city. But the majority view is being ignored while an autocracy here decrees the market cannot remain in St George's Street, but neither can it be moved elsewhere as a unit. Why not? Well, the council leader repeatedly states on social media and in correspondence to me that the, the decision on all this has been taken. It's a done deal, a fait accompli. There's nothing to see, but there is something to see. Because statements in William Hicks's report about declining levels of market income are not mitigated by the inclusion of the fact that this council has been failing to properly collect pitch rates from these market traders since 2020. And he avoids them nothing at all from April to August this year until a market trader put that news into the public domain at our public meeting. Now, she did so bravely, in my view, because she knew this would prompt action from the council once it was known, and the traders did. Then were received invoices, but only after this council's cabinet rubber stamped its plans on July the 28th, referencing this sham of a report. Why does it fail to acknowledge non-invoicing as a reason for low income? Well, the reason I've been given by both Benefit of Harding and Ashley Clark is that some kind of anomaly due to COVID must have occurred. Where did that line suddenly come from? Because I've seen detailed correspondence from the market manager, David Hart, citing only equipment failure. Yes, the well-paid card machine the council used stopped working. But when these market traders offered to pay in cash, this was never accepted. When I wrote for the series EastEnders, we placed the market in the center of a local community because that's where markets belong. Most city councils recognize this, but not this one. Now you have a fiduciary duty to those you represent and it's not being fulfilled. Debts have gone uncollected, allowed to hang over these traders like the sword of Damocles for two years, and now they're offered pitches where they cannot possibly make a living, in residential areas where the residents have already complained. These are unpopular plans, they're unsupported. Okay, red fair evidence. I beg you, councillors, to do the right thing, as Colin Spooner has done over there. He's voted against his own party, and he's doing the right thing. Thank you.
because of this. Finally, we went public about this at the recent public meeting. Even though we knew the council would finally invoice us, which they did just days later, but with incorrect sums. We have felt ignored and belittled with councillors referring to what we sell as tax. We have been made to feel as if we don't count. On June 12th, our chairman, Steve Bamber, sent an important letter to Bill Hicks after the consultation went public, and we finally got sides of the unworkable sides off to us. Steve explained that the matter was time sensitive due to the council's own deadlines of July 11th for a response to its consultation, and so he asked for a reply by the 17th of June. Steve never received one. Three weeks later, he had to go to the local press and community forums about his lack of response to the important content of this letter. We have been treated badly. The public now knows this. Over a thousand people have signed a petition to support us and save the market. Everyone is asking what they can do to help. You can help by listening to us tonight and understanding that this procedure is all wrong. We are not street traders, but market traders, and we need a market to trade for, just as our community needs a market. Steve Bamba has always said to the council that there is time for ne negotiation about the pitches. All you have to do is listen to us tonight and agree to be represented. Thank you.
which tried to be as narrow as possible about the grounds of this scrutiny um, subcommittee and it's um, making my head bleed a little bit. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to ask a question which is what is the current policy, the current street trading policy? So on page 16 of our agenda, which reports was the contains the cabinet report on the 20th of July, which is why we are here today. It says that, that it proposes several updates to the current street trading policy. Now I have Googled Canterbury City Council street trading policy and I can't find one. So my first question is, what is that policy and where is it to be found? Because if this is about a review, I think you have to have an existing policy before you can review it. So maybe that's a bit nerdy and a bit boring, but maybe that's enough for this committee to agree that the decision making was flawed on the 28th of July and that it should come back either to cabinet or to full council. So I and I want to elaborate on that a bit because what I am what I can find on the City Council website are things to do with like criteria and how to apply for a license and how much it costs. But for me that's about about process, it's not about strategy. Now I wasn't able to attend as a, a, a an observer sadly at the cabinet decision on the 28th, but I have looked at some of the some of the comments that that were made, and I don't think that what um, the, 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 there is a policy explicit about about what um, what the, our council wants from the street trading policy. So, for example, one councillor, I believe it may have been Car Councillor Carmack, but apologies if I've got that wrong, um, was talking about having different stalls, different stalls, not so only one cherry stall, not four cherry stalls. But I think another cabinet member, it may be Councillor Clark, and again, apologies if I've got that wrong, talked about competition, like for like, being a very good thing. So I would like to know, what is the policy of our council on street trading? Do we want several cherry stalls, or do we want one cherry stall? Also, for example, how many food stalls is too many? Are we going to have 17 coffee pop-up stalls, or are we only going to have one? And if that is going to be at the discretion of officers, is that adequate, or should we not have a policy? I don't think you can review a policy until you have one. Thank you. Yes, please. 
meat trading policy. And I, I, I just don't understand because the cabinet, and frankly, this decision was taken by five people. Mm. Oh, four people, sorry, I'm being, I'm being corrected. There are only four people present at the cabinet who could make that decision on the 26th of July. So all of this has been decided by four people, and yet I can't see a strategic vision, a policy around street trading that is now being reviewed in inverted commas. You can't review something that doesn't exist. It seems to me that the Council Cabinet are currently trying to create a policy as they go, rather than reviewing a policy. And if there isn't a policy to review, which is what I would maintain, then is that not grounds for this to be referred back? Thank you.
why, we, why is this council, why is cabinet, incapable of understanding that the needs of some, let's face it, sole traders, entrepreneurs, business people, local people, not national retail chains, people we should be trying to protect. Why are their interests not being considered? Why did you miss this opportunity to give them the best possible solution? And that, I think, is really, you know, what I don't understand the process that we've gone through. I don't think it was impossible to do that. And what you seem to be saying to me is, well, we, we made a bit of an effort. Um, they're a bit unhappy, just because the first of January is over. I don't think that is a real responsible council operates towards its citizens. And it's, as I say, the entrepreneurial people I believe that you would normally want to support. Um, but I can't get from you a sense about whether you understand the problem that I'm trying to drive at. Maybe I'm just explaining it really well.
um, about alternative siting of the market um, when they had to move out to St George's, but that um, nothing suitable was acceptable, nothing suitable was found. Yet I was struck by um, one of our speakers um, from the public uh, this evening said that they had um, market um, traders had actually drawn up some proposals which a previous officer of the council had indicated could, could well be, be workable. And so my question is, if this is, um, you know, if there is some common ground to be found that would not necessarily significantly delay the, the, the works to St George's, but that could accommodate the market in a way that would um, you know, it, uh, allow the existing market traders to continue. Some of them have been trading for you know, 20 plus, 30 plus years, and truthfully, they wouldn't have survived if there wasn't a demand for them. And we know that they attract additional footfall to the, to the city. So is there not some way of, of accommodating that um, because I'm not aware of the detail of what was on offer and why it was unacceptable. Thank you.
to try and pretend that there is some fixed time table which can't be uh, avoided at all. That should be the whole purpose of having a treatment system. Now, I'm going to wrap up with this. Um, and I'm going to end with Judy, for a nice of what people have said about uh, the delay if you send this back to council. I think there are potential grounds uh, for this morning given the policy. But I can push it back to council, definitely goes to October 13, and that definitely has the effect that we just described as a very normal event to do that. So I'm going to move that we refer this back to the cabinet member. Uh, on the basis of that, the portfolio order did not explain to cabinet that the material difference between current market traders and well street, existing street traders and the proposed new street trading licenses for market traders. And we think that's a crucial issue. Didn't explain what the business person impact on the market traders would be. Didn't explain what the economic impact of the discounting of the market would be in the economy category. And didn't explain what football impact of spending would be. And I think we've established that those facts are not actually paid. So on that basis, I think the petition was material to the detriment of the market traders and the city economy. It's against the express wishes of market traders, residents, and representatives in terms of houses for the city. So I'm moving the referral back to the cabinet member. I second. So I can bring to the agenda to the administration. We need to Bunch of robber barons. Poor people are people. Poor people need that market. Just 
still name. Why are you hiding behind that pillar? Oi! Excuse me. Sorry, don't intimidate people. Can you please leave the chamber? I'll ask you to leave, sir. Please. I'll, I'll leave her alone. I'm staying here. I'm staying here. I'm calling the meeting. This is a total whitewash. I'm having my say because oh, yes. the way this is run, we get three minutes and no right to reply. You councillors are a waste of money and you don't represent anyone except yourselves. You're bourgeois. I'm going when I'm ready, thank you. You're a bourgeois bunch of. Uh, working people, market traders, and you don't care about them at all. 1.2 million pounds you want to spend on paving stones and some trees. And meanwhile, these people get mixed up with street traders, they drew up plans, they drew up fine plans for an alternative pitch, and nobody took any notice. Don't think no, this is going to end. John Gilbert's last stand. And you'll all be out of your jobs. <coughs> all of you, council officers and councillors, come the next Three election, minutes, officers minutes, before that. Councillors, <laughs> please, 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 please. Don't think this is finishing. This is just the beginning. This is the beginning. Here we go. <laughs> Don't waste your time. Don't tell me to leave either, because I'll stay here as long as I want. Okay? Don't you tell me to leave. I am a member of the public and I'm going to have my say. Go on, give, them, give me the phone. Thank you. We pay your salary, mate. No, expenses. We pay for this hall. Who, who are you, by the way? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Are you executives? Are you the ones you're taking over by from John Gilbert? <laughs> I know they're not going to answer. They work for a man, that's why. Okay, you, I've listened to you all night, now you can listen to us. All right, Dave, respect. But that's it, what you've done does no good. You know, it's a the only, family, you don't know that only time these councillors listen to anything the is when the hard. people join up together and defeat them at the election box. And look at you, Ben Centre Harding, just standing ben is back up to us. Back to charming, us. absolutely yeah. charming, yeah. aren't you? Idiot. I, I see. Right. I'm, going, Go I'm going off now. Yeah, go back home and think about they have children to look up to, have financial problems. All of you have the money in the bank, and you never think about people. Anyway, your idea, you would not make it already. Why would the toilet be coming? That's why we told you. Yeah, but you don't understand what people work every time. They work hard to feed their family. But you, what, what you do there? Just sit down. You not care about people. You do care about. Yeah, if you care, you need to think more than that. 
Yes, yes, please. Come, guys, come. Locking the door.